Hey everyone, Wolf Lord here. Today we continue our week dedicated to the scattering, the infamous moment that saw the Primarchs flung across the galaxy. Yesterday we began by discussing the version of Chaos, the scattering they showed to the wounded Horus Lupercal. One where the Emperor could have easily stopped it, but instead willingly allowed it. And today we're discussing the viewpoint of the Imperium, those immediately present to the scene, namely Chief Custodian Valdor. Spoiler warning to begin as the events we're discussing today are from the Horus Heresy novel Valdor, Birth of the Imperium, by author Chris Raitt. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, without spoilers, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So, the scattering, as much as a famous moment and event as it is, is still equally so a mystery. The truth of its events argued and debated eternally. As we spoke of yesterday, for Chaos, it was something only allowed by an uncaring Emperor. For the Imperium, however, the Primarchs were stolen. We saw this event through the words of Chaos, their emissary Erebus. But for the Imperium, it's not so straightforward. The Emperor's perspective, something we never receive throughout the entire Heresy series the one character who must always remain a mystery. So the closest Imperial view to this event is most likely that of Captain General Constantin Valdor. It's a moment we discussed a few years back, but obviously one we have to revisit now. It comes from the novel Valdor Birth of the Imperium, where Valdor is recounting the tale to the interviewing High Lord Kandawire investigating the rumours of a new general's program that had been hidden from the council. At the rise of the alarm sounding, Valdor was in a meeting with Malkador and Amar Astarte, the chief scientist of the Emperor. They were actually meeting to discuss the continued issues with the Thunder Warriors, the random dropping down dead and losing of their minds obviously why the Primarchs and the Adeptus Astartes were needed. At the rise of the alarm, the three of them together raced to reach the scene, with Valdor summoning as many of his custodians as he could. Despite already being within the inner depths of the still-being-created palace, such is the size of the place, and such is the length they went to hide the Primarch project from the rest of the universe, it was still a long way from where they were, and so it took them a while to get there. And this immediately provides some very interesting information. I have often speculated on whether things would have been different had I been closer. I believe Malkador feels the same way, and it is a source of some guilt for both of us that we were not there. However, the Emperor was at the very heart of it, and if he was unable to intervene successfully, then I must believe that no one could have had the power to prevent what happened. Right away here, we have something completely opposite to the scattering Horus Lupercal was shown that Valdor was not actually immediately present at the site. However, a possibly key piece of information, a certainly tantalising one, the Emperor, in some way at least, apparently was. And even from this very first passage, it's clear, at least from Valdor's view, the scattering was most certainly not planned and that even if the Emperor did allow it, it's not information he has shared with Valdor. I have often speculated on whether things would have been different had I been closer. I believe Malkador feels the same way, and it is a source of some guilt for both of us that we were not there. 
No offense to Valdor, but I don't think there's much he could have done at all. However, Malkador, his presence could have perhaps been very valuable. This isn't the old and tired Malkador of the siege. This is a Malkador who humbled a fully grown and in his prime Horus Lupercal, who had two other Primarchs begging him to let Horus go. Still one of my absolute favorite lore scenes ever, by the way. So maybe Malkador could have done something. However, Valdor's description continues. I can still remember my desperation to be faster. I believe I came as close as I will ever come to knowing fear in those moments. Not for myself, but for something far greater. By the time we arrived, the entire facility was in a state of confusion. The walls were breaking. The roofs were coming down. Buttresses that had taken years to fashion were twisting out of shape under sudden loads. There were bodies everywhere. Technicians, artificers, mech workers, even custodians had been slain, though by means that I could not understand, for their armor was still intact. We were soon deep underground, caked in grey dust and fighting against the darkness and the smoke. The halls were of considerable size. Tens of thousands labored in that facility, all under a cloak of the most stringent secrecy. And the survivors were panicking, trapped in the corridors like herd animals in a slaughterhouse. The Emperor was not visible to me, but I understood why. The entire structure of that place had been critically damaged, and he was holding it together. Though I could not determine his precise location, without him, the chambers would have by then have been nothing more than choked rubble. It was a strange sensation, moving through a physical volume of space, entirely suffused by the Emperor's presence. It was also a reminder to me of his power. Even I need reminders of that from time to time. The closest Valdor had ever come to fear. Because he knew everything that was at stake here. He knew how vital the Primarchs were to the Emperor's plan. It seems inconceivable to me that the Emperor would have intended the scattering and Malkador and Valdor knew nothing of it his two closest, most trusted advisors. And the absolute devastation and carnage that has been unleashed here, a vast departure from the scene presented by the ruinous powers. Go back and re-listen to our discussion yesterday on the version of Chaos. A warp rift or storm opening above the capsules and almost peacefully stealing them away. Horus able to fight Valdor and the custodians beneath it. Yet here, the walls were breaking, the roofs were coming down, buttresses that had taken years to fashion were twisting out of shape and under sudden loads. There were bodies everywhere, technicians, artificers, mech workers, even custodians had been slain. Chaos's scattering was like a walk in the park compared to this. This was a devastation. An assault. By the Emperor's will alone, the entire facility was being held up. This vast, buried deep catacomb beneath the Himalaya mountains, crumbling in upon itself. As he did whatever he could to hold it all at bay. By time for help to arrive. And another interesting factor here, the custodians were not slain by battle. Their armor all still in pristine condition, so it's no connection or evidence again of a link to Horus, who in his vision slew Valdor's custodians in battle. Very much physical wounds. Everywhere Valdor went, he found horror. His description, horror. Soldiers vomiting blood, bashing their own heads against the rock. 
in the one place they had deemed safe, tried their hardest to hide, which made it all the worse. And so I guess the question is, what sounds more like the actions of chaos? The unified four, their one move, strike against the Emperor's grand plan. The version the Emperor stopped in the blink of an eye, without breaking a sweat, choosing to allow it, or this, as Valdor himself describes, horror, with loyal servants bashing their own brains in, vomiting blood. I know what sounds more like the actions of a desperate, unified chaos pantheon to me. We hasten to recover what could be recovered. I directed those of my order to impose their control on the outer precincts, and this was slowly achieved. They were compelled to euthanize many whose minds had been turned by what they had seen. Those who might yet survive were taken to medical units. Emergency engineering teams were shuttled in to shore up the outer gates, lest we end up buried alive within as we labored. Every one of them was accompanied by a custodian, for there was still madness singing in the air, and I could only trust those of my own kind to remain resistant to it. I began to understand the true nature of what we were set against then. The Priest King was just a shard cut from this dark crystal, a mere sliver of greater abomination. I could breathe it in there, I could taste its essence like wormwood on my tongue. On some days, even now, I can still taste it. The greatest of the many chambers was by then lost to us. Its interior was aflame, its great vials broken. I looked inside, just for a split second, and saw twenty vessels robbed of their contents, with lightning still snapping from vein to vein. There was nothing to be done there, and I almost turned away from the deeper vaults too. It was Astarte who pressed on, and I followed her. For me, it's hard to believe the Emperor of Mankind, the great adversary of Chaos, the man who had spent his existence shepherding humanity to a future, away from these predators, to defeating them would allow their presence to infuse the very depths of his sanctum. Again, these are the words of Valdor, a custodian. Maybe if this were an ordinary human, even an Astarte, we could doubt the events. But Valdor, that's just not the case. The devastation here is evident. The scene of panic. Defeat, almost a reality. Were the Emperor involved in the scattering in any way? Surely it wouldn't have gone down like this. The ruination of everything they worked for. Risked. Even if Chaos is to be believed, and he allowed it, do we not think he would have ensured the Legion project survived? If he knew the Primarchs were going to, that it wouldn't have been left to Amar Astarte and Valdor, risking their lives amid the flames, grabbing whatever they could. It just doesn't make sense in any way from the Emperor's point of view, given everything we know about him. For panic-stricken help to have to be rushed in from all areas, for chaos to be allowed to so freely taint and devastate. It's just not how the Emperor operates. He never has. Why would the Emperor be wasting his time, trying to hold the facility together, stopping it collapsing in on itself, if he wasn't simply trying to protect the people therein as much as protect the project? That he was simply reacting just as much as everybody else. And it's important to note here, Valdor doesn't see the Emperor. He's most certainly not within the Primarch's capsule chamber. He can just feel his presence everywhere, holding the walls and the very roof back. 
If that truly cold and calculating emperor that stumbled onto the scattering as chaos suggests is real, why was everything so close to being lost? Why was it all such a mess? It's clear from Valdor's point of view that there was nothing about the scattering that was intended or allowed. It was quite simply an attack, an attack they believed at the time cost them the Primarchs. And only by the quick reactions of the Emperor, Malkador, Astarte, and many other loyal servants didn't cost them everything else. The entirety of the Emperor's grand plan. But as always everyone, what do you think? Do you see more traces of reality within Valdor's version of the Scattering? His arrival at the aftermath? Or do you see falsehood? Why do you feel the version of Valdor is so vastly different from the one presented by Chaos? Would this panic have been a reality even if the Emperor allowed the scattering? Or like me, do you think it's clear evidence there was nothing about it allowed? That this surely represents more the lengths the Pantheon would have to go to to inflict the scattering on the Primarchs in the first place. That it wasn't simply a stealing, it was an attack. But as always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off. And I'll see you all again tomorrow as we continue our scattering week.